Welcome to Badgedamia, a podcast so educational two professors could be hosting it. Hi, I'm Dr. Danielle Dickenview, and joining me is Dr. Bill Henneman. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode five of season whatever this is <laughs> of Badgedamia and The Bachelor. I'm Kim, and with me is Bill. This is I- the vacation you get this week. Aren't you lucky? We are excited after some technical issues. We got I hit, it. I hit some stuff. It worked. We're both drinking. Yay! Cheers. Mm-hmm. And Elvis is here. So Ooh, I like it. It's going to be a good day. I have be- a map of Grand Rapids on my glass that my friend Jen uh, Eby gave me. It's my favorite. I like it. Yeah. I've been to Grand Rapids. It's a happening place. If you've never it's been, nice. they got breweries. Well, I was a kid, so I didn't go to the breweries, but oh. I would now. They also got legal marijuana. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know who could use some to maybe calm herself down a little bit? Shanene. She who shall not be named. Um, so before we get to the question of the day, I'm just going to put a caveat out that I will not be referring to her by her name at all if I can help it anymore because I'm tired of talking about her, but we still have to talk about her because she's still on the show. And so like- So the Dementor. And like the biggest part of the show. God! Yeah, like they are, they are <sighs> like, you, you're gonna get all the airtime, woman. Well, and icky. Okay, so anyway, question of the day. So they went on an international adventure to toronto canada which for all the geography buffs is like next door to new york right pennsylvania so it's not i don't know that canada is that international so my first question is is canada international do you have to have a passport to go there you do have to have a passport. Yeah, then it's international. Okay. You didn't used to. But right. after like the NSA and Homeland Security got all up in your biz, now you have to have, you only, but you only have to have a card. You don't have to have the full oh. blue passport book. That's uh, that's very friendly Canadian of them. Yeah. So well, for Mexico make- and for Canada, you just need the card. We won't make you bring the whole book. Okay. You just just a little up. card in your wallet. Okay. The card. Okay. Oh, gosh. Oh gosh. oh, gosh. So we've established that Canada is international-ish. But super nice. Super nice. Yeah. So what is, where is the most foreign feeling place you have visited in the States? Where have you been that oh. you, maybe you're in another country? So I went to uh, one of our former students and one of my close friends, Danny Haley, was stationed down in Fort Bliss in um, El Paso. Oh. And he, you know, when you're on the base, everyone spoke English, but he, uh, his wife uh, is uh, uh, Mexican American. And mm-hmm. so her family lives right down by the border crossing. So I actually was really lucky. I got to go hang out with them. I got to go eat. You know, I kind of hung around the, na- yeah, I hung around the neighborhood and it was like, this is a whole new world. Like, this is uh, really putting things into perspective that my English is not that useful here. Uh, yeah. And I have what I like to call survival Spanish, where I can okay. just, just, you know, I can get by, but it was just like, wow, I, it gave me mad respect for anyone who comes to the US and is yeah. expected to speak English and try to get around. Um, and it also made me really, like when I go to other countries, try very hard to, to learn parts of the language and at least give, good faith effort um so i don't have a nice languages though so what about you that's a good question thank you sometimes i ask good questions um so mine is a little snarky okay but in college i worked for a an amazing museum down in tallahassee florida and we would take kids um we it was a we ran a summer camp it was a history museum and we ran a summer camp for kids and it was a lot of kids who were there like staying with their grandparents for the summer 
Um, and they were great kids, but we took them around to all these different places in the panhandle of Florida and Southern Georgia. Okay. And myself, an Iowan, and my the teacher that I assisted, who was a black woman from North Carolina, mm -hmm. um, who was amazing. I love Sabrina. Uh, we're still Instagram buddies. Um, but we took the kids on our itinerary was this um, county museum mm -hmm. in, I want to say, Thomasville, Georgia. It was this tiny little town. And the, the lady who was talking to us at the museum and giving us a tour definitely said the South will rise again and that Ooh. it's the war of Northern aggression and all of this stuff that Sabrina and I both looked at each other like, Ooh, where are we? Oh man. That's my story. Yeah. And then we had, we basic, and none of the kids, a lot of the kids that were at the camp weren't from Florida or Tallahassee and Tallahassee is not like that at all. So we had a lot of discussions in the vans as we were driving away from the. I can imagine. Sorry, yeah. I had to. I I have to get some more books to prop up my laptop, so I'm actually kind of looking at the camera, so I'm not like looking down. There we go. Now we're now we're making eye contact, folks. So here's a little secret to my filming. I have my laptop up on two game box game board boxes. Okay boxes english uh -huh. is my first language tonight um so trivial pursuit and apples to apples are keeping me eye level with my camera so so i am propped up if we're doing this i am propped up on um let me spin my books around so i can see them the corrections wonderful book thank you mm -hmm. uh dr christy marchesani former guest for loaning it to me is that you jonathan know? franzen um yes yep I've heard good things. Very good. Uh, you're one and only by um, one of our former guests, Adrian Finley, which was outstanding. I bought it for Danielle for her birthday, and then she let me read it. And I want to read it. You're welcome to it. Uh, okay. I, I give it a good uh, couple thumbs up. It's dystopian teenage fi fiction. Love oh, jeez. Yep. Okay. Oh, um, and then Falcon's Guides to both the Grand Canyon National Park and Michigan's Upper Peninsula. And I've been to both. Excellent. Oh, you've been to Michigan. I'm I'm backpacking it this summer, so. Um, we have driven through the UP several times. My I have family in Michigan, so. Okay. Very cool. All right, I have one more question because I cheat every time we do this question of the day, and I ask one question. But what no, is the most American thing you've done in another country? Okay, I thought long and hard about this, and um. I'm pretty sure a girl from another country made out with me, not because I was attractive or witty, but just because I was American. And I felt like, you know what? That probably takes the cake. And I was like, totally not ashamed. Like, she was like, you're American? Yeah. And she was obviously like, American guys are hot. I was like, listen, you could do way better, but let's, let's do this. Let's get it. So... You know, I almost, one of my questions almost was, have you ever dated someone in or not, like someone from another country? And I have done, I've done, I've done, I've dated two men from outside the United States. Several countries. <laughs> I knew that you have because of your stint in Ireland. So I didn't put that in. Yeah. Um, what about you? Yeah. Be, I ate at a McDonald's in China. Okay. Because we were craving french fries so bad yeah that we went into a, a, a mcdonald's and had french fries i feel like stopping because mcdonald's changes it up in every country yes and so it's kind of french fries sta tasted the same though okay it's an interesting endeavor to be in a different yeah. country and be like what do they have here yeah. yeah i've had mcdonald's in paris too was that because of uh pulp fiction no, I didn't. I don't think Pulp, had Pulp Fiction been out when I was in Paris. When did Pulp Fiction come out? I don't know, mid nineties, we'll say. Okay, so yeah, probably, but I probably hadn't seen it yet because I don't think I saw Pulp Fiction until I was in college. I'm pretty sure they were talking about France. I can't remember if it was England or France when they were talking about what they call a Big Mac. A Royale with cheese, right? Yep. yep. 
I know stuff. I, you you are the the guru when it comes to pop culture. You are the most knowledgeable person I know. Thank you. Okay, so I did a bit more of a concise recap this time because it didn't seem to be as crazy this week My as it has been in the week the last time I did it, but it's still more than two minutes. So really, you- I thought it was as crazy, if not more, but. Maybe not two minute recap. Let's do it. This is my favorite part of the show, by the way. When I don't have to do it and I get to sit back and drink. (laughs) Well, I might take a couple of sips while I do this. Okay. (sighs) Okay. So we open on Houston, Texas, and we see cars everywhere because what is Houston if not full of traffic? And I know that because I've had to drive in it and it sucked. Okay. So the ladies are sitting around and they're rehashing the tote trophy toss and it's crazy and their ladies are trying to figure out why the f the dementor is still there again from here on out i'm only referring to her as the dementor i will not say her name okay and then we go to serena and clayton's one-on-one um serena's wearing tennis shoes and socks on the beach and at first i'm like what are you doing and then i realize why because they're going to the pier um and they have fun times at the pier and i just have to say fun fact i love roller coasters And I loved this day. I would be all in on this kind of date. Um, Clayton told us that he worked at the Fudge Factory at Six Flags St. Louis. So that's a job, fun fact. I wonder how much he got to snack on it. I don't like fudge. So I would have been a great employee there because I wouldn't have eaten any of their product. Okay. And I'm obsessed with their dinner locale. I love a good chandelier. I also love the Sia Song chandelier. So there's that also. Um, I really appreciated their discussion about family connection, communication issues growing up and how it affects their, them as adults. And I just have to say, yay, communication. I know we'll talk about this a little bit later, but I really appreciated how much actual conversation happened on these dates. The dates themselves were always so much better because the other drama wasn't there. Um, Serene shared a lovely memory of chasing fireflies at her grandma's with her cousin and I absolutely also used to chase fireflies at my grandma's so I I teared up a little bit at that Um, she talked about losing her cousin and how hard that was I think Clayton is a good listener but kind of a weird responder he said thank you for sharing that Um, I think we're going to talk about that a little later but Uh, we've got differing opinions his responses are weird and then Serene gets to date Rose and then we go to the cocktail hour And it seems like the Dementor has one view of how everything works and how uh, the show is going. And then all of America has the very opposite (laughs) view of how everything is going. Um, The ladies gather at the cocktail party and Clayton pulls the winning football team to get some answers and clarity. The Dementor looks nervous. Sierra, again, is the one who tells Clayton about the trophy toss and the others share their opinions. Sierra is always the one, I don't want to say tattling because it's, information that he needs to know but it's always sierra Mm -hmm. um mara speaks the truth and clayton seems upset about the dementor's behavior and yet he pulls her out to speak and confront her on her allegations she apologizes to him while looking down which isn't a very sincere way to apologize and then she goes out and apologizes and i'm using that term very loosely to the group and i don't think many of them believe her but some of them accept her apology And then she and Clayton go and suck face. And then her talking head is insane. And she says she faked the whole thing. And she's starting to make me nervous. Like she might be a murderer. I don't know. Um, The rose ceremony, we say goodbye to Jill, Lindsay and Sierra. The the mentor stays and the ladies are pissed. And then she goes on national television and her talking head is, I just sent another bitch home, which is, one way of thinking about how the situation went down. And then Clayton goes, we're going international. And they go to Canada, which we have established is in fact going international. Only by the slimmest of very technical markets. And I would have thought they would go to a foreign country that's a little less tight on their COVID restrictions because right. Texas, yeah. even this fall was still pretty locked down. So yeah. I'm kind of surprised they went to Canada. Um, okay. Gabby gets a one-on-one. She's adorable, by the way. There's another helicopter date, and they're flying over Toronto, and then they play street hockey, and then she discovers a dog, and it's adorable, and they become best friends, and they have innuendo jokes, and they're talking about 
classic beaver jokes and it made me laugh. And he really seems to enjoy being with her. Um, and then the group, they go back to the, where they're staying in Toronto and they name the group date names and two names are missing. So we have our first two on one date, folks. Bum, bum, bum. Genevieve and the mentor. I'm not sure why Genevieve is getting pulled into this, but we'll talk about that later. Gabby and Clayton have their dinner date. They have incredible views of the city. Um, they talk about giving love versus receiving love. And I thought that was a really good conversation. I love when they talk about getting help when they have family struggles. And I love how much this show, especially this season, they're talking about mental health and seeing therapists. Well, we know one person really needs to see a, see a therapist, but everyone else talks about that quite a bit. So I appreciate that. Um, I still don't get Clayton's appeal. But he does seem to be a really good listener, one-on-one, um, -on -one, especially for anything Dementor-related. Um, and then Gabby gets a rose, and then they make out in the pool. Good times. Uh, we go to the group date. Some dude walks up, and it's Russell Peters, who I don't know, but apparently he is the rose champion of Canada. So that is a title that he has. Um, he talks about the importance of a sense of humor in a relationship. which Roast, I not with. rose. Roast what? champion. Roast champion. Roast, not roast. For, for a second, I thought you said rose, and I was like, oh, I totally missed that thread. Well, he could be a gardener. We don't know. It's true, yeah. And oh, maybe gosh. he likes to make a good, like, beef roast on Sunday mornings. Maybe he has, yeah. like, a multitude of roast ribbons in his garage. He's so far ahead of me, talent-wise. <sighs> I don't love roasts, like, the joking roasts. Oh. Um, and we'll talk about that a little later. But the yeah, but you love the regular roast, like the the one. I do too. I love oh, a good roast yeah. with potatoes and carrots. Yeah. yeah, I know you can't do onions, but I dig. No, the but I do it with carrots and potatoes, yeah. and it's pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, the girls roast Clayton and each other, and I, like I said, I don't like this date, but they all seem to have a good time, and the distillery they were at looks super cool. I want to go there. Um, and now we know that Clayton kisses his mom with his mouth closed, which is another fact that I'm not sure we needed to know, but now we do. Um, the official two-on-one announcement, two-on-one announcement happens, and Clayton, or the intern, whoever actually wrote the card, doesn't sign it, love Clayton. So the girls are a little bit freaked out by that. Um, and then the Dementor says she's going to push Genevieve over the falls, so... Motive. They have, what is it? What is it? I watched so much Law and Order, I should know yeah. this. Um, intent, motive. Intent to murder. Yep. Yeah. They got it on television. Okay. So then Clayton and Rachel make out hard, and then Rachel does, in fact, get the rose. Uh, okay. So we get to the two on one. The limo body language was crazy. <laughs> they both sitting in the back of the limo and they don't even look at each other or talk to each other. And it's like a high school movie when the two arch nemesis are sitting next to each other on the bleachers at a pep rally and they yep. don't acknowledge each other. And it was awesome. Um, and again, why was Genevieve selected for this two on one? I don't feel like there's been anything between the two of them that he would be aware of it, they I, just had that weird like yelling match but that he, was one thing like i would have thought they would have either he would have either kept Lindsay, right or sierra because either one of them has a way more like yeah justifiable i guess he really didn't want either one of them but does kind of want genevieve i don't know it was weird um they get on a boat and I just think this is dangerous. I don't know that you want to get on a boat with the female version of Cal Hockley Jr. from Titanic because we know that you don't come out alive if you That's do a, this. That is a solid reference. Um, and I do think Genevieve is a little worried she's going to be murdered in the falls. And then to be continued. Nice. That's a good, that's a good recap. I do want to say one more thing. Um, Gabby said at the end of the episode that the Dementor is like a succubus. And so I Googled it. Do you know what a succubus is? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm just naive and didn't know what it was. But when I saw the description, I was like, um, yeah, probably. She probably is. So Google it if you don't know. We're making you learn some stuff today. There was an episode of South Park where there's oh. a succubus. And that's how I learned what it was. That makes sense. Yeah. 
I am hit and miss with my South Park, hmm. but I do have several favorite episodes. There's okay. some good So that was the recap. It All right. was kind of a wild episode. Um, the talking, I'm going to say her name once. Shanae's talking heads are nuts. Like, unhinged. I what'd you say? Unhinged. Yes. And I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm a little bit worried for everyone else's safety when she does leave if they don't. Like, if they if she gets kicked off in the two in one, however long they're gonna extend it, I feel like they're gonna extend this two in one for three mm -hmm. more episodes. But if she's the one that goes home, I hope that they like put her in a car from the boat and she doesn't go back to the hotel because I feel like she might cut somebody if she or goes she, back. She goes on a speed boat without her passport back over to the U.S. side. And she can't get us. She's in America now. She'll probably get COVID. That was a bad joke. Sorry. I think that the um, United States and Canada do have extradition agreements. So if she Ooh. did something and then went to the U.S., they could ship her ass back to Canada. I'm sure we do. If we don't have extradition <laughs> agreements with Canada, what's the point of it? Who would we have extradition? Yeah. All right. What do you got for Across the border in Minnesota? What? <laughs> what do you got for concepts? Okay. So what I want us to talk about what makes a good early date, because a lot of, there's a lot of conversation about that. Is it, but is, is a first, like, especially a first date, but early dates, because we see on the bachelor, they always have an activity and some of them are cool and fun. And some of them are ridiculous and mm -hmm. not something you would ever actually do on a first date, like muck um, stalls in a barn, but um they also always have the dinner part where they can have the deep conversations. Right. So my question is, what do you think makes a good early date dinner versus activities? Because I, um, so me personally, I don't like dinner dates um, in restaurants. If I'm going to, if we're going to do a dinner date, I'd rather like have it at my house or their house and he cooks or I cook, um, but not on the first date because that's how you get murdered. But um <laughs> There was a restaurant bar in St. Paul that I would, I took a, this is gonna make me sound problematic, but I would take a lot of first dates to Chatterbox in St. Paul because they had, it was a restaurant, but they had like a wall of board games. So you could play, uh -oh. pick a board game and then you could play it at the table while you ate and got to know each other. We would not have uh, made it. You learn a lot about someone when you're- And we would not have made it past the first date. I No, I, I know, because you don't like board games. I loathe the board games. <sighs> so problematic. Well, they have card games too. Do you hate card games? Yeah, I just don't like games in general. Like, like sitting down, probably because I'm forced to talk and feel feelings. And I'm not, I'm not about that life. But if you play a board game, you don't have to talk about feelings. Oh, they have to learn how competitive I am, and that might be why I only, uh, only first dates at the Chatterbox. But interesting. And one second date where we went, um, what's the frisbee golfing? Disc golf. Yes, that was a fun day. So, what are your thoughts? Well, what's a good first early date. So I've actually looked a bit on research on this, and mm -hmm. um, I think The Bachelor does a pretty good job. Um, and so it should be something that both parties are interested in. And so if you were going to go on your first, first or second date, you would want to ask them, what are some things that you like to do? And mm -hmm. then kind of pick something that you're mutually interested in. Um, it should probably be something where you can interact, but do the activity. So kind of a side-by-side -side date instead of a face-to-face -face date. Um, yes. It gives people a little bit of distance from the like, we're just here to talk. Yes. Um, and then, um, something that is a limited amount of time. So you always have the option to keep doing something, but mm -hmm. if it is something that takes eight hours to do, then, you know, you wouldn't want to take them on a hundred mile bike ride because you on a hundred mile bike ride bar crawl. Right. Because if it's not going well, you're like, Oh God, we're here for forever. Um, but like mini golf, um, 
I don't know, escape room might be interesting. Although you don't get to really talk a lot. You're not like, so what are you doing? Oh my God, we got to find the key to this door. Uh, Well, but it would also tell you how they handle pressure. That's true. And you kind of want to know that early on. Yep. Um, so, and then dinner, dinner is interesting. And I probably never would have thought about it until we became friends because you have a, a more limited thing that you can have. So I would probably tell people that it would be good to say, where do you like to go out to dinner? Or is mm-hmm. there a place you really like to eat? And then if you agree, then, you know, you go there. Um, and spoiler alert for anyone who's not married, most of marriage is just trying to decide where you're going to go out to eat when you go out to eat. It's like a, it's, it's an in-depth and low, low be it that parents get involved because then there's this whole other <laughs> like layer of you're trying to be really nice to your in-laws. Good thing is Elaine's in-law, Elaine's mom is up for anything. I love my mom, but she will avoid making any decision possible. <laughs> and so Elaine's like, where do you want to go? My mom's like, anywhere yummy. And it's just like, oh, pick a place, Danelle. Well, I wanted to go to the place that gave me food poisoning. Dang yeah. it. Dang it, I wanted to go to the really bad place in town. <laughs> so those would be the things I, so if I'm permitted to make my one, the, the, the date choice that I think is the worst date choice is a movie. Because oh, okay. you don't talk, you don't interact. Like sometimes I feel like theaters, you're crammed in or someone's behind you and they're being loud. And it's like, I want to be with my friends because when I flip out on the kid behind me, I want them to be like, you know, your friends are like, well, that's Bill. That's who he is. We knew it. I don't want like my new date being like, wow, I'm here with a crazy person. So can you imagine Shanae? You take her to a movie and someone's kicking her seat. She would murder them. Yeah. She would pull the shank that you know she has in her purse. She definitely has a knife in her purse. Made out of a nail file and just, ugh. I think the one of the best first dates, just in in general enjoyment of what we did, was actually a UNI men's basketball game. Oh, it was in the before times, um, but it was just like because you you're interacting with each other. It's not like a movie where you have to be yep. quiet, yep. but you don't have to like carry the conversation the whole time. And as long as you're both rooting for them. Well, that was the funny part. He was, it was a UNI Illinois State game. And oh. he was an Illinois State grad. Oh. But he wasn't wearing uh he wasn't wearing anything Illinois State. So okay. it was kind of like neutral. But we definitely were talking smack about each other's teams a little bit. So So the amusement park I thought was a pretty good one. I you, love that idea. You get to go do like talk. What do you like to do at an amusement park? Everyone has opinions on that. But no one has like crazy opinions on it, right? Yeah. No one's like, I can't believe you love the silly silo. You know, you go and do it. I love spinning rides. Oh, yeah. I can't do them. Kim couldn't be at the at the bachelor watch party at our house, but I was the only person who enjoys spinning rides. Um, Christy was like, I don't like, she's like, I'm not a big fan. Jorge really loves, um, uh, what are they called? Roller coasters. Me too. Lane, That's my Lane gets motion sick on them, but it's like, um, you know, there's something for everyone and you, you walk around. So there's intermittent time. There's food. You can get yeah. food. Yeah. Yeah. I, there, I don't even know if it's still there anymore, but at Adventureland, there was a ride called the falling star. Oh yeah. It, and you would go up and then down. And I loved it so yeah. much, but anything that swirls me around, like a, cat like a teacup or like even, even teacups my my stomach is so weak really? and oh. lame that I get super super nauseous on any spinny rides but I can go upside down in a roller coaster and have no problems interesting it's- so for anyone who doesn't know Iowa and we know we have many international listeners listeners from all over the states uh we have a place in Des Moines Iowa capital of Iowa um, called Adventureland, and imagine, yes. imagine what like Six Flags, but on a much more shoestring budget. <laughs> and so one time when I worked at this place, I got two free tickets, and they have this uh, uh, roller coaster called the Tornado, right? And it's like everyone's ridden the Tornado if you're from Iowa. 
So we're standing in line, my girlfriend at the time and I, and it's going up the big hill and and all of a sudden it stopped and went backwards down the hill, caught and then started going up again. And there were people like crying, you know, like, this thing so it goes like they don't stop it it goes all the way through they get done and people are like you know in tears and the poor 17 year old takes the out of order sign and hangs up he's like oh we won't be doing the tornado for the rest of the day and some jackass behind me is like why and the kid's like (laughs) are you serious (laughs) so that's the best part of Adventureland is all the employees are like high school kids and they don't care (laughs) (laughs) your life is literally in the hands of a 16 year old kid yes yeah (laughs) who may be high probably high it's definitely high (laughs) wow fabulous okay excellent so now i want to talk a little bit about the art of of making an apology because we saw one i guess uh on monday night that was horrific. Like she is, it, she seemed like when she was apologizing to Clayton, she never looked at him in the face when she was apologizing. And then when she apologized to the girls, I don't even know how to, this is like Emmy word. And she even said it was Emmy worthy because that's how nuts she is she said i'm i lied to them it was my greatest acting give me an oscar give me an emmy because it was if you didn't know this situation you just walked in and watched her apologize to them you would think oh wow that's a really sincere apology she but fake tears yeah the viewer knows it's not and the ladies know it's not so have you in your work as a relationship guru and professor what do you talk about in when when apologizing in relationships? You know, we talked about this like one of the first seasons we did this show. And essentially, apologizing is not saying I'm sorry if. So the right. second you say if makes it no or longer but. an apology, it becomes a contingency. So yeah. I am sorry because. So you say I'm sorry, you recognize what you did, and then you make some type of explanation on how you will improve that later so I'm sorry that I yelled at you that wasn't right you take ownership next time I get mad I'm going to think about how it affects you and I'm not going to do it right and then the last part is you make good on your promise you make good on your apology Um, and that's kind of the the model that I always tell people Um, lots of people aren't very good at apologizing though and I get it because I'm not either, right? Like it is very hard for me when I have to apologize for somebody at work when I do something wrong to not say, I'm sorry if that made you feel that way and then explain why I did it. And it's like, it's not an apology. It's me saying, wow, you feel that way. Here's why I was right. Take it. And I think just acknowledging that you hurt someone's feelings is something that not everybody does. I think a lot of people don't, either they don't realize that they should apologize or they just won't apologize. Um, Or they wait until the person demands an apology. Right. That's the other Then it's worthless. If you have to say, you need to apologize to me. Yeah. Worthless. So there is, and I haven't found a word for it. So I feel like I should do some work and coin it. But it's like, apology fishing and it's when like you're pretty sure that you've done something wrong to someone and so you're feeling them out right and you're like asking them you're trying and you're trying to see if they're going to be like you were a dick apologize to me it, there needs to be a good word for it yeah um, so listeners if you can think of a word or if there is a word out there let us know yeah um, but because i would like to know that too yeah i don't know i so so i don't think hers was i mean Hers was so far from an apology that I don't even know what you would call it. Um, But I did notice that Clayton um, on Twitter, and I'm going to look it up because he actually wrote an apology to um, what was the the girl's name? So he did, Elizabeth. And Lindsay got on TikTok and said he's lying because she told him everything before she left. Right. 
So he said, I'm sorry, Elizabeth, um, for interesting uses of commas, but uh, for what you're going through, for what you're going through, uh, yeah. I wish I could have seen what was happening when I wasn't there. I wish, right? I obviously knew y'all weren't in a good place with each other, but, but I thought at the time that it was comma solely comma petty drama. Still not really apologizing. It's he, not an apology. I'm sorry you're going through this. Um, I didn't know what was happening because I wasn't there. I thought it was petty drama. Probably still thinks it is. I would have sent Shanae home immediately for making fun of you for being neurodivergent, at least to use that word, had I known. So really it's your fault because I didn't know. Overall, the experience for me watching hasn't been fun. Maybe you should apologize to me simply because I'm seeing all the damage that I caused. I hurt people. I need people to feel bad for me. I really meant well. I didn't mean to do this, but my actions weren't always the best as I now can see the repercussions from my decisions. But I well, couldn't and honestly, really she was a really good kisser. So I yeah. just kept her around as long as I wanted. I can promise you I'm learning from the mistakes though and I'm doing everything in my power to come out the other side a better man. So I would point out the other thing is at no point did he say, and here's how I'm going to fix it. He said, yeah. I'm going to come out a better man. That's a very ambiguous statement. With magic. Right, exactly. <laughs> that is, that to me, if I, so Elizabeth's got to do what Elizabeth's got to do, right? But if I were her, I would say yeah. that is not an apology. I, I don't normally like the behind or uh, uh, the um, girls, women tell all episode, but I think I'm going to really enjoy this season. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go down. Because it's going to be wild. Yep, I agree. Holy Toledo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and at no point did she, because even, even in earlier episodes when she was apologizing to Elizabeth, she was always, I'm sorry, but. Yeah. She never has, I don't know that she's ever had to apologize to anyone ever before. But I do think she's a really good audition piece if when she goes to LA after this and tries to become an actress. Because she yeah. acted very well in that scene. She's burned her career, though. I mean, at this point, she's just going to have to make money off of her stint on Bachelor in Paradise. And, you know, maybe yeah. she makes it on Dancing with the Stars no! as the person no, no. that everybody loves to hate, you know. I want Gabby on Dancing with the Stars. Oh God, I love Gabby. Gabby, the like best. Gabby and I would be really good friends. I feel <laughs> like her and I would get along. We would have fun, fun times. Yeah, she's good people. Yeah. And she loves dogs. So you know yeah. she's a good human being. Well, having lived at our house, Kim, you know, we have a surplus of pets. So we You you have the right amount of pets for your house. We do. Probably too many for any other sane person, but no, because Gus doesn't really like take up very much space. He doesn't, no, <laughs> he just sleeps. He just kind of chills with whoever is chilling. He finds you and then he chills with you. That is Gus, Gus the bus bus. Oh, Gus. I still Dog. like to knit them sweaters. I kind of forgot I was going to do that. Dog's so nice. We named him twice. <sighs> yes. So I've talked about this a little bit in my recap, but the yeah. cook date was a roast. And I'm interested in your thoughts on this because one, you're a really funny person. And so I feel like you get humor and you get comedy. And so I'm interested on your take on this because I was just uncomfortable. I, I don't know why you would say such cruel things to the person that you say you want to spend the rest of your life with. Um, I think humor is very important in a relationship, but some of it was hurt, like more hurtful than funny. Right. And I think there's a pretty fine line between teasing and being mean. And so I, um, <laughs> I once, <laughs> this is my mom told me this because I don't even remember what the topic was, but she said, 
Kim, I once saw you make a person cry using only your words, and I don't remember what it was. <laughs> so I may have been a bully, and I am true. I am truly sorry to who this person <laughs> was, who I don't know who it was. But, but had you known you were being mean, if I known I was being mean, and I don't, I don't think I actually made someone cry. I don't know. She might have been. I'm sorry for the way I made you feel, Randy. Sorry for the way I made you feel. Um. <clears throat> But I, I enjoy a little bit of teasing, but I don't, I don't, and I like to do a little bit of teasing, but it, sometimes it gets to the point where it's like, okay, stop. Like we're done with the joke. It's not funny anymore. Um, if something gets brought up that happened five, 10 years ago, I, like, a lot of families have this where something happened in the family like five, 15, 20 years ago. And every time the family gets together, it's brought up yeah and I don't think that the people that are the butt of that joke really like that it gets brought up over and over and over again um because I'm the butt of one of those jokes and I can tell you I hate that it gets brought up all the time so are you going to share what it is uh I got really sick after a wedding um in which it was the basically one of my second moms was dying of cancer at this wedding okay well, she like she she made it to the wedding and then she died like two weeks later. It was her daughter's wedding, and everybody just got blitzkrieged at uh -huh. the because it was really sad. Like it was really hard to see her so sick. Mm -hmm. I just and I ate food that made that didn't sit well in my stomach. Not surprisingly, and I just like and it was red wine Ooh. and I was sick all over the guest room at my sister's house and it, it gets brought up repeatedly <laughs> at family gatherings. And I hate that it gets brought up repeatedly. Like yeah. my finest moment, I'm not really proud that it happened. And it hurts my feelings that it gets brought up all the time. Right. So that is that is that border between teasing and I think kind of bullying a little bit. Um, so I think you have to be really careful on like, on what you're teasing people about. Yeah. But I don't, and I don't know why like this would have been such a great opportunity to be a completely dementor free event and everybody roasted her. So everybody brought her up. So she was still in part of the conversation. And this could have been a really nice like 15 minute break for everybody to not even have to think about her. And they brought her up. Yeah, I think they brought her up because she's safe, right? Like everyone knows that they don't like her. I also don't think they felt comfortable really going after Clayton. You know, they made some jokes. They made some yeah. jokes about how he rode the bench in the NFL. Yeah. Which was pretty good. You know, that was good. And he seemed, you know, for, to his credit, he kind of laughed at all of them. Um, they kind of went after each other. There's actually a really good episode of the office where yes. he gets roasted. And it's, I think it's probably the best explanation of what is wrong with the roast and and why some people find them funny and yep. why they cross that line so if you've never seen it it's it's amazing it is an excellent episode and uh, yeah so uh, but i i don't like them i whenever they were on comedy central in college our friends would be, oh they're gonna roast hugh hefner and it's like i mean they're gonna say a bunch of stuff that we all say about him but i don't know if you need to say it to him to his face right yeah at the, and like, like with cameras on so they can't get mad because yeah. it's being recorded and at the watch you know everyone who was here we were all like i wouldn't want to do that i already know all the things i don't like about myself i don't need someone telling me what i don't like about exactly like I, I feel like i'm a pretty self-aware person and it's like i don't need someone being like you know you mispronounce words all the time yeah. uh you know whatever so i yeah. i don't get it i don't get how it gets you any closer to finding the person that you love. Uh, I feel like every marriage and relationship, there's like the teasing that you were talking about and yeah. kind of affection. And I feel like everybody has a different level of tolerance for it. Yep. I know um, couples that I'm friends with that they are constantly making fun of each other, but it doesn't seem to bother them. I know couples that it's like, there's a very hard, like, minimal going after each other but then if it crosses a line they and really then it's just being mean to each other no, but then you're at their house for dinner and they're like mm -hmm. another great episode of the office the dinner party where michael and jan are like kind of jokingly making fun of each other and it's like 
So, everyone's been in that situation with a couple where you're like oh god this yep. is going bad you know yep. they are like they've went past fun joking to a long time ago they're, they're getting into the therapy stuff that they, they need to go to therapy yep for. exactly exactly so so i guess in conclusion teasing is okay as long as you know what your boundaries are with each other or with the person that you're teasing Bullying is never okay. And roasting, roast a chicken, not a person. So here's what I would say in conclusion is we've talked about this in the Gottman golden ratio, right? So like the five to one compliments to negative interactions with your partner. And I always think about this, like, you know, people who can playfully make fun of each other. It's like, they probably have so many good interactions that you make that one and it's like, oh, I gotta be joking around. But if you have seven, eight, nine bad interactions and one positive one, it feels like piling on. Yep. And so I think that's probably where it crosses the line too. Yep. And you can't, the other thing you can't do with that is be like, your hair looks nice. Your teeth looks really great. Your shirt's nice. You're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you can't pile up the complaints and then just <laughs> like they gotta, yeah, so. Elaine jokes about that sometimes. She's like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to compliment you on five things and then really hammer one home. So <laughs> That's so problematic. Yes. So. All right. Are we on to mine? We're on to you. All right. So this, we're going to have, we're going to talk about this. So you've said several times you think Clayton is a good listener. And so I'm interested. What, what about Clayton? And I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just, what about him makes him a good listener? And I kind of wish we had Danielle because I feel like we're really crossing into to D3. Her territory. Yeah. Well, I think just the fact that he lets them talk and doesn't interrupt and say, oh, I've been in that situation too. Or, oh yeah, me too. And then make the conversation about himself. Yeah, you're right. In that way, he's a good listener. He is a very good listener in that way. Um, and he also gives eye contact. Mm -hmm. He also it, it smiles. So it's, it's inviting, right? Um, and he does a lot of nonverbal. Um, what he doesn't do, Kim's doing it right now to me. Very good job of it. Yeah. What he doesn't do, um, a couple of things that drive me nuts. One, I've never heard him really like paraphrase it back to him. So it's like, oh, no, he doesn't. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh, oh, yeah. But he's never been like, wow, you know, you must have felt really bad when that happened, or mm -hmm. you must have felt trapped. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is when they're done, he always says, Thanks for sharing. And I think- I hate that. <laughs> yeah, I think the women, and this is probably a comment on men, right? Is that men tend to be very poor listeners. And I think the women, like he is just really like just hopping over the listening bar and they're like, he's amazing at it. And it's like, no, really, he should listen like all of your girlfriends listen. Like he should be able to hear you and say, wow, you and your mom not having a relationship, that's got to be just horrible for you. Do you ever want to like reconcile with her? Do you think about that? Like he should be able to ask questions that move the conversation. Mm -hmm. And maybe he does. And maybe they edit it out. And they were like, you know, what's going to make him look really good. If we just edit, thanks for sharing on everything anyone says. <laughs> um, Didn't Matt James do that too? Matt James did the same thing. And I just, I'm not sure... I mean, I, I, what are your thoughts? I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm going full guy on it. Like, let me tell you, Kim. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it shows you how low the bar is when my thought was he's a good listener because he doesn't interrupt her and lets her get out a full story before he says anything. That's how low the listening <laughs> bar is. I think a lot of times. Um, and I, but I'm an interrupter too. So I, that's something that I constantly work at in conversations. I mean, my job is part of my job is to listen. So um, I always, it's always funny when I'm with folks and I'm, we're at dinner, I'm always done eating like right away because I'm eating while they're talking and, and then they ask questions and then I can, but um, I, I don't know. I think the bar is so low that just him being quiet was nice. Um, but I don't think he really, I think he comes from a pretty stable, normal family. Mm. 
do I? And so I'm not sure he can identify with some of the things that they're talking, that some of the women are talking about. And maybe that's why he doesn't push things further because he doesn't really understand what they're dealing with. Yeah, that's a really, yeah, that's a good point. Thanks for sharing. That's a good point. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, that's I, I maybe that's what it is. Maybe he's just out of his depth. Um, but you know, I don't think that would be a bad thing to say. Like, wow, I just have no context for that. You know, you're brave for for going through that. And yeah. how does that impact you? Um, I, yeah, so I think it, I Twitter was lighting up with that, you know, about is he a good listener? Is he not? And so I just, I was interested in the, you know, what people think about it. Um, and I don't think interrupting is always the worst thing. I don't like to be like one of my hot button things is to be interrupted, especially when I'm in a train of thought, but I don't, I have to remind myself, I don't think interrupting is always the worst thing because it shows that people are excited, right? A lot of times when we interrupt, it's because I'm really excited and, and I want to like, you know, join in on this conversation. Um, and so yeah. I think in some ways that helps, you know, show people that, but I, I just think, if somebody's response to everything you say that's emotionally kind of loaded and emotionally important is, oh, thanks for sharing and that's it, you're in for a, for a rough ride down the road when you are yeah. in an argument and you're like, you know, I can't believe you did this to me. And they're like, thanks for sharing. You're going to be like, no. I no, I want to fight this out. We're having yeah. this conversation. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear me? Do you understand that what yeah. you would piss me off? Thank you for yeah. sharing is not the way to, yeah. It reminds me of the episode of The Office where, where Phyllis downloads the ways to respond to Angela. Yeah. And she's like, that must be very hard for you. How you does that really, make you feel? How does yeah. that make you feel? Yep. My response when, whenever I get, when someone's, when someone has like, really like if someone's parent is sick or somebody has really bad news or they're just having a really crappy day my response is always fuck okay let's talk about it because that's like that's the first thing like don't you want to just scream like this yeah. sucks okay now let's talk about it yeah and that's very validating but it's also giving them more yeah more time to and maybe that's the other thing that we have problems with Clayton is that the thanks for sharing really has no emotional backing to it. Right. But when you say it has no emotional, yeah, when you say like, fuck, let's talk about it. You know, you're with them now you are with that person. You want you are mirroring their emotion and they're like, wow, they understand they have empathy and thank you for sharing is not empathetic. It's, it's like, I mean, you could get a robot to do that. You know, I could, you could call, you could call a phone line and talk, 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 talk. And then it once you have paused, it'd be like, thank you for sharing. Does Alexa say thank you when you talk? I don't have an Alexa. Does she say thank you when you talk to her? No, it's the people on the other end listening to your all of your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Bruce, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bruce at NSA who's listening in on all your conversations. And he's like, Jesus, Bill, you are boring. <laughs> <laughs> now. Get off the couch, Tubby. Come on. <laughs> Stop watching me, Bruce. Yeah. God. <laughs> well, that's all I had for that. Nice. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Your Thank you for out. listening. <laughs> Lessons learned. Lessons learned. I learned you uh, like roller coasters. And if I had to guess, I would say roller coasters were not your thing. I don't, it would have taken you for a water ride person. I do love water rides. Okay. So at least uh, I was on that. Yes. So I am definitely a water baby. You put me near a pool, a lake, an ocean, a river. I am in it. Um, I like water rides, but I don't like walking around with wet underwear for the rest of the day. Ooh. The amusement parks. So I, but if it's a hot day, you got to hit the water rides every couple of hours to cool mm -hmm. off. Um, but yes, I am. I am a roller coaster fan. I have my real lesson. Okay, what's your real lesson? Just saying the things you're supposed to say is not enough, right? So saying sorry is not enough. You have to back it up. Saying thanks for sharing, you have to back it up. 
um, you know, it, it might work in the near term, but eventually you're going to come to a situation where just parroting those things don't work. So you should probably go to therapy and do some work on yourself so that when those things come up, you can, you know, work through them. So. I think everyone should be in therapy no right. matter what. I think everybody should be in therapy. It's great. It is. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, my lesson learned. Um, my lesson learned is that I think I want to go to Toronto because while I still have questions on it being international, um, I really want to see Niagara Falls. And although I kind of don't think Genevieve is going to make it out alive, that boat looks super fun and yeah. seeing the falls from below would be incredible. So my lesson learned is I need to add Niagara Falls and Toronto to my must see list. I uh, wanted to go there after I watched Kim's Convenience. It looked like a pretty cool Oh, show. that's such a good show. Yeah. If you've never watched yeah. Kim's Convenience, it's it's a 20 minute show, 20 minute episodes. Hilarious. So good. Yeah. It's on Netflix. Yep. Office ladies, I've made several mentions of The Office. I think it's time that we collab. Um, oh. Yep. Jenna Fisher, uh, Angela Kinsey. Well, and I actually pulled my activities versus dinner on early dates idea partly from Unhappy Hour, which is one of my favorite podcasts also. And this week, Matt Bellisai and Barry Finkel were talking about first dates and what you should do on a first date. And so I kind of pulled it from them too. So we're just, we're just name dropping all of the good. What's on happy hour. I've never heard of this one. Oh, this is a good, so, good, good. It's like, amazing. Relieving. It's, uh, You've listened to us. What should we go to next? Yeah. Go to unhappy hour with Matt Balasai. So he talks about like, it's, they talk about all the crazy things in the news every week. And then they go on a rant about a topic. And it's usually a topic that I also feel is rant worthy so I'm often giggling while they're doing their rant and then sometimes they have guests on and sometimes they just talk about all like the and then they have a they have a segment at the end which is called do what do better white people where they talk about different um, organizations and activities that we can get involved in to help um, marginalized and um, people who are different from us who have just had a shit time for the last 400 years so um highly recommend it I like it that's a good way to sign off <laughs> next week next week we got danielle and kim so if you got mm -hmm. questions twitter at batchadamia gmail batchadamia gmail.com thanks for listening thanks for listening goodbye bye <laughs>You've been listening to Batchadamia with your hosts, Drs. Daniel Dick McGew and Bill Henniger. All opinions expressed on this show are solely the opinion of the person who spoke them. If you like our podcast, please consider following us, leaving us a five-star rating, and a positive review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, please share with your friends, family, and other ardent Bachelor content lovers. If you have comments or questions you would like us to address on the show, you can email us at batchadamia at gmail.com or on the Twitter with the handle at Batchadamia. Thanks for listening.